We're good. We're whenever, live. Whenever you're ready. Hell yeah. Awesome. Welcome to the show. I got somebody pretty interesting today. I got Casey Corkmas on here. This guy, I mean, let me tell you a little bit about this guy of what I know. Big time, big game hunter. Um, excellent drummer. Uh, all around. He's just a, he's like a hunting badass, I would say. I would say that. What do you think? Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show, Casey. Well, first How are you? off, thank you, thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. Is, uh, I've been trying to get you on here for a little bit. My podcast debut. I know. I mean, you're, everybody gets a little bit, you know, they get a little bit nervous in the beginning, but it's it's okay. I'm here to hold your hand, not yeah. in a weird way. I appreciate the introduction too. That's uh, it's pretty flattering. I, I liked. I'm telling you, I like. You know, I had uh, I had Travis on here, Travis Wright on here the other day, and uh, we we could agree that we like to have people around us that are unique. And I would consider you one of those people. Yeah. And uh, we're like a collector of those kind of people. And that's not like a collector. Like we keep you in the basement and like put lotion on the skin. Not that. But, uh, but you know, nice. So so tell me, you just got, I, I get a phone call from you. Was it a phone call or text? You text me. But, uh, I sent you and a text like, and I was like. You're like, hey. In a bind. I'm in a bind. I'm like, oh, crap. Yeah. You know, because I know what you do. And I'm like, you know, as far as the hunting world, you're like us. And we're all over the place. And you call me. And. Tell me, like, you went all the way so, down yeah, to, so, uh, you traveled to rookie, South Texas, kind of. Rookie mistake. Uh, a buddy and I drew a, uh, it's a free-range all-dad hunt. It's an archery-only deal. And we misread the regulations. Oh, dang. And got down. And, but we, we called ahead. We talked to the park service. They were going to be, I mean, they, they got us our permits. They did the whole thing. And I looked at the hunt brochure as we walked out the door. Mm-hmm. And saw that the dates had changed. I mean, they had they they had a like. A is that something that? So is that something like it was the dates from last year? Yeah, that you so saw. We we're, we're going off the dates from last year, and oh, it was yeah. it was on the website. So the dates were so they never were, updated the website. They didn't update the website, but they had updated hunt dates. And so when we got the hunt brochure, and they're I mean, like, we, "Sorry about your luck." We called in the the park rangers. I mean, we did everything we could to try to go about it, but. Yeah, so we started trying to scrap out any kind of hunt, calling all our buddies and everything. Yeah, I remember yeah, they we, called me. I thought you were like in like bad trouble. Well, we were trying to make people think that. Well, I mean, we were. <laughs> nothing. Eight hours. There's nothing eight to hours shoot at. All night. We thought we were. You know, yeah, we'd nothing been to shoot on at. This hunt and we've yeah. been looking at Onyx and everything, getting ready to go. And yeah, you get get hit with that news and. It was so a slap you in the face. so you guys drove what was that like? That's like nine hours. Is it was it? an eight hour drive. Yeah. Yeah. Way out there in the middle yeah. of nowhere. But I'm, now I'm, you were by Amistad, Amistad, Amistad. Yeah, so yeah, Dev- Devil's River. Just oh yeah, just that place is awesome. That. Yep. And you didn't bring a reeling rod. No, no. We should have gone down there and got a guide, dude. But, but we uh, we ended up just launching the boat anyway. Went out and searched our area and did a little bit. of So scouting. you so season starts up. When does it start? In October. So, yeah, so it's October. So they moved it a whole month. Yeah. Well, they uh, they grouped the uh, sheep hunts with the deer hunts. So oh, they, so they, for, oh yeah, yeah. They moved the, uh, all the Man. big game stuff together. I'd love to shoot one of those sheep. Oh, it's going to be cool. I mean, I'd love to also. Yeah, because you went on a sheep hunt. Was that last year? Uh, that was two years ago. Like for a big, like a bighorn. Was it yeah, desert no, bighorn? No, desert bighorn. So that was oh, a uh, that was a United States. So that would have been, uh, I guess, what they they call just the Nelsoni uh, bighorn. So it'd be the the desert bighorn, and they they've got a Mexicana. Which uh, we hunt those when we go down to Mexico as well. Dude. Pretty much the same thing, but just different variety of them. Right? They look. Do they look different? Uh, yeah. So the Mexicanos will have like a little bit uh, more red in their horns. Uh, okay. They'll have a little tinge in their 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 uh, Dude, cape that's as awesome. well. Yeah, that's but awesome. They're they're all really like you. Really, I saw you really guys cool. last year. Where you guys, you guys had like a. I mean, you basically like spotted it from way down low, right? Is that how it worked? Yeah. Or, and then got a hunter in on it. Uh, so the, you're talking about the, I guess the one a couple years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, seems like it was last year. Yeah, man. glassed for I think we were up there a little bit over a week and finally found the the sheep that we were looking for as a once in a lifetime tag for the hunter and Dude, finally glassed I mean, him up. I big think it was time. A three three mile glass. So Shit. it was actually me who spotted him. Dude, uh, so him freaking cool. Yeah, we were uh, we watched him for two more days. That's the thing with sheep hunting is it's a mental game. Had to watch him till he was in a place where we could really even hunt him. Yeah. And then. Made the trek up in there and really got it done. Five hundred and seventy yard shot. Dang, yeah, he did. That's a, that's did so awesome. Job. And that's that's what's cool about the the stuff like that. Me getting to go out and help with the yeah. guiding and the spotting and everything is wouldn't have. I wouldn't have to make that shot. Yeah, when it all it's comes your down fault. to it. Yeah, even if you've been putting in the range time, you got crosswind. I mean, once yeah, a anything can deal, happen on that stuff. It's it's. I've never it's been awesome. on a. I'm. I mean, that's definitely one of my dream hunts. Uh, 
That's one. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not much of a horn hunter, but that's one of those ones that I would. That's just a cool hunt. Oh man, I need to do it before I get too old and decrepit. Yeah, because I, I mean, think it's, it's once in a lifetime. It's that's an one of the, it's an ass whipping. Oh isn't dude, it? it's brutal. To just to get up there. Yeah. Oh, I love. So, it. what part of the world were you in when that? Where you when you guys when you were the. So we were spotter. in um, the Vermilion Cliffs. We we're in Arizona. Okay. Which is uh, kind of Grand Canyon country. Okay. We're just uh, kind of north of the Grand Canyon right there. That's cool. Uh, yeah. Awesome country. Oh, it's beautiful. So I guess the season on those is, um, is that more of like a, is it, it's hot? Is it, I guess it's hot then. No, we were in, uh, it was December. So we actually oh, had okay. snow the first couple of days of the really? hunt, which that was interesting. That ended up making a, like a clay kind of mixture in the mud oh, or in the dirt and everything. And, I've got some videos. I'm, I might have posted them on my Instagram of yeah. just we've got just balls of this mud and clay stuff just stuck to our feet and we're kicking weighs, it. And each leg weighs eight pounds. Stuff's going <clears throat> everywhere. Oh, oh yeah, just one of those things. But that's what we we live for. That's it. That's what it does. You know, it. being the adventure hunters. I mean, yeah, the harder the better. A hundred percent. And that's why you know even even duck hunting. You know, I mean, that's one reason I, I chase public ground. I mean, it's man, it makes you appreciate that stuff. It's not like you can go out. You know, nothing against you know guys that go out and and go and hunt in a blind and, you know, take a four-wheeler right to where they go and they can get up at six in the morning. And oh, the older I get, that sounds It still really, doesn't really sound, nice. it doesn't sound good to me yet. Oh, I, I love it. I can't, it's I'll just. I'll do any, I'll, I'll, I'll hunt anyway, though. It's just the, I don't know, it's the, uh, I don't know, I think it's it's the more of the chase than the kill type of deal, you know, for yeah. me. So I like to just, you know, sometimes you, you go out and shoot two birds and you walk five, ten miles, five or ten miles, oh, spent like $3,000 in fuel and I'm like, I got, I think duck's the most expensive meat pound per pound per pound. Oh yeah, that's out there. Well, that's you know, why I had, you hadn't seen me popping up, you know, as much on the duck hunt in the last couple of years. Yeah, no, you kind of went. In. Yeah, you kind of went just big game. Yeah, and uh, but you've, uh, you did. You've been in Mexico quite a bit yeah. chasing mule deer. We, we spent a was? lot of time in Mexico. Yeah, mule deer, and then uh, helping on some sheep hunts. And that's so cool, dude. Yeah. And what got? And so what got you into all that? Uh, that was actually my dad. So my dad's kind of he was the one who set the basis for all this. Okay. And, he got me started. He uh, started putting me in for Western, uh, like all the big game points and all that stuff. Oh, so you yeah. hear about the point systems in yeah, the yeah. different states. So he started me off when I was real young. So got me a, a above. How the is it in Mexico? Like traveling down there? I mean, is there any kind of like? Dude, everything you see on. Do TV you drive in? Are you driving? Hype. No, it's a we fly in. So you fly in. Yeah. Uh, they pretty much treat you kind of like royalty there when you get Dude, there. Dude, it's it's not anything like you see on the news or TV. You get down there and yeah, but I bet if you drove, it would be right. Oh. I mean, just having to go through checkpoints and stuff. You know? Yeah, but, I mean, you got to think. Like, I would think. Because, I mean, I've been to Mexico just on border towns. I haven't really been way into Mexico. Um, but I see some sketchy stuff there. Border, I, it, might unsafe, it might be more unsafe. It might be more unsafe, like, at, in Laredo than maybe, like, where you guys go. Absolutely. Like, they cut your head off in Laredo. Right. They're not going to do that down there. On a jet ski. At. No. These people are all great, happy people. I mean, you're going to have your crime. You're going to have your normal stuff. But, yeah. I mean, heck, we live in town. You yeah, know, you we go live in Tyler. Right, and we have crap going on a couple blocks away all the time. We just had to get an alarm system put in our house. Man, we've had ten break-ins just here around our studio. I used to leave my doors unlocked when I was, you know, living in a Hell old no. bachelor house and everything. We'd have our doors unlocked. Yeah, no People one cares. Could come in and out. Yeah, not like that anymore. No, no, it's not. You know, that, everything's crazy. Yeah. It gets crazy. Well, I, you know, I was, uh, I've always wanted to do some of those, some of those hunts like that, and and, uh, you know, definitely where. You know, where you get, well, you, you do, know, I do, do I do elk hunting. No, I do elk hunting. And here's the deal with elk hunting. Like I, I almost, I, I've almost lost my life one time elk hunting. And I've only been twice. I mean, you know, I got stuck up there at like 11 half thousand feet and overnight and it was a bad deal. It was one of those deals where we, me and my buddy, Jeremy Stone, we went to hike up top and when we, I, it had snowed. And I glassed a field. It was probably like three or four miles away on the other side of a valley. And I glassed, and I'm like, hey, we're going here tomorrow. It looks good. The snow's come down, so it's going to push those bulls down. And this 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 little patch, this little uh, meadow should be money. So we go in, and we park the four-wheeler side of the, on the side of the trail because we're hunting public. And so we pack. I've got like 80-pound pack on. He's got what looks to be an 80-pound pack. So we, we start hiking in. Um, easy walk. I mean, we're just walking downhill. It's easy walk. And when we get to the base of this mountain and it goes vertical, right? Instantly. And I'm like, oh crap. Well, 
So we, we start like hiking all the way to the top of this thing. Well, we, since all those beetles have been there, you know, all the blowdowns, oh, all the deadfall. Yeah. Tons of them. That'll kill you. And it's got hip deep snow and we're, it's 45 degrees. I mean, when you're standing straight up. I mean, the ground's in your face. Well, we got to go over these blowdowns. It takes us hours upon hours to get there. Well, it's starting to get dark by this time. And so I'm looking on my GPS. I've, you know, I kind of got a pin set. Well, we start getting there after four, five, six hours of this. Um, my buddy Jeremy's like, man, we got to be getting close. Well, I'm like, my GPS says it's only 300 more yards. We're going to be there. He's like, dude, it, it's back that way. It's, it's over there. I'm like, no, I'm telling you, my GPS. <laughs> the only time my GPS has been wrong. Oh, no. So we, we bypassed this this uh, this meadow by, I would probably say, 800 yards. We missed it. Um, and we could kind of see it out there but because I was looking for grass. He's like, no, man, it's there's snow on it. I'm like, there's not snow. I, I, I've already glassed it yesterday. You were there. I had glassed a field that was a long ways down, and this was a totally different one. And so we get there. It's about dark. We finally get there. He's already mad at me. And uh, we've got those. We've got some pretty awesome tents, you know, those mountain tents. They're yeah. just one-man tents. Um, my buddy Jeremy uns- he un- does his pack, and he pulls out a full-size pillow out of this pack. I'm like... Why the hell do you have a full, why the hell do you have a full size pillow? He's like, dude, I gotta be comfortable. I'm like, going to ask about the eighty pounds in the pack. Yeah, it wasn't eighty pounds. It was wow. a lot lighter than mine because his was all pillow, and I was it was a full size like like my pillow. Oh wow! Like he ordered from the guy the online. Necessities, you know. Yeah, you gotta, so gotta have your pillow. I was like, what the hell? And you know, we're in you know we're in hip deep snow. Uh, I was like, well, we'll just hunt this tomorrow. Not a big deal. We'll just bunker down for the night. We'll be fine. Well, I got these tents, and they were uh, they're a double wall insulated tent. So they've got like a tent inside a tent, um, and it has like a little vestibule on the front, so you can put your gear in. So I was going to build a fire. Not going to happen because everything was under snow. Couldn't find any couldn't find any wood. So Jeremy already gets inside the tent, and uh, you know the sun's just now set below the mountain, so it's starting to get cold real fast. So I jump in the tent, and. Uh, get my sleeping bag and everything. Well, my feet had gotten really wet. And so I took my boots off. The only thing I had for heat was that was my jet boil. And so I fired that jet boil up. It's not a good idea because it instantly changed the temperature inside the tent and the tent, it basically started raining, yep. rained inside my tent. Everything was wet within five minutes. So I had to shut that down. Every, now, now everything's wet. And instantly when I turn it off, the whole inside of my tent turns to a sheet of ice. I'm like, and it it's only seven o'clock. I've got a whole night to go. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I uh, open that vestibule up and I boil a little bit of water. I heat up a, a water bottle to where it's boiling. I throw that in my in my uh, sleeping bag down at the base of the sleeping bag, and I get in that thing. And dude, all night, like I had a sat phone. I had a sat uh, like a that Garmin. Um, it's like a sat phone you can text from. So I I was talking. Inreach. Yeah, in reach. I had an in reach. Yep. And so I was texting off of that to Melissa, letting her know kind of where we were at. But I was about to hit the button. But I kept asking Jeremy, I'm like, you okay? He's like, oh, yeah, man, I'm fine. We're good. Well, all night, I was afraid to go to sleep because I thought, man, I was so cold that, and it kept the ice, the sheets of ice would fall over. And then as I was heating up the inside of the tent, all that water that I created was, it was just like a, it was like a, a wetland environment inside there. Yeah. Just like a whole weather cycle. And it was, dude, it got so bad. Anyway, we made it through the night. Woke up the next morning, and uh, that that field had, like, iced over, so you couldn't even walk through it. You would scare everything out in a mile because as soon as your, your boot would hit it, it would just crunch. Yeah. So we were like, man, we're going to pack out. So we just we just basically went to 11,500 feet, spent the night, and Good started packing. training out. exercise. Dude, it was bad. And so we, we go to walk down. We're, I tried to look at my GPS on a faster way, so I saw this saddle on my topographic map on Onyx. And I uh, followed the saddle down, and we still blow downs, you know, but it wasn't quite as steep. And so we got all the way down to the bottom of the saddle, and it was just like straight drop off all the way around. And we had been walking for hours. And I was like, dude, Jeremy, what are we going to do? He's like, F this. And he undoes his pack, and he sets it down, and he rode that thing down like a toboggan down the side of the mountain. <laughs> and it was, dude, he, you know, he's a big dude, so it looked like you took like a, maybe like a backhoe through there or like a road grader. That's awesome. So he like slides down this hill, man. And anyway, he gets to the bottom hill. So I do the same thing. I just follow him down. 
Anyway, you know, you're not supposed to take your, your four wheeler side by sides anything off the trail. Well, he went back to the trailhead and got it and came back and got me. Um, and then we got like deathly ill after that and went home. So that was like, that was my, so you're not going to elk hunt for a while. You know, the thing with man, I just wasn't that mad at him. I'm not that mad. I'm not that I mad. Think at you him. need to go just get a really good experience under your belt. I do. You know, like the first year I went, I shot an elk in like the first 45 minutes. Now he wasn't very big, yeah. but killed one. I was like, what's the big deal? And, uh, but you know, they kill a lot of them over in that area, Colorado and, and, uh, you know, so, I mean, I, I think the romance of the, of big game hunting, I love, I loved it. I think it would be awesome to go shoot one with a bow, but I, like I tell everybody, I'm like, man, for what I've spent in just gear and machinery and equipment, I could have went and just paid a guide to yeah. take me. I that's spent the, over 10 grand. That's the advice I give to a lot of people. It's better just to, you know, yeah, go get a guide. Yeah. Like Cortland, he's been wanting to go on elk hunt. I'm like, dude, <laughs> just go find a guide, pay ten grand, go on a really badass hunt, and you know it doesn't have to be easy. Like you shoot him from the truck. It's never easy. No, no. You, I mean, you can go out there and uh, you know, like Al, um, you know Al, the my photographer buddy. They're on a they're on elk hunt over in that part of Colorado, and they're on private. They've been hunting for days and they hadn't got a shot. Yeah. And it's and it's on private. That's how it is. It's uh, the idea of elk hunting always sounds really good until you yeah. go do it and you realize what it is. It, Man, it's they not, make it look good on TV too. It's they the, make it look beautiful. It's that altitude, dude. Yeah, and like, it just it's just gnarly. The the elk. Oh, they, they have a will to live unlike any other creature I've ever hunted. It's amazing. They're awesome. Yeah, it's it's definitely you know definitely wild, man. Uh, you know, so it's it's just a different world, you know, from big game that I don't get to do a, a lot of. You know, I look at like the lease and stuff that I'm on down in South Texas. I mean, it's not, it's just a meat hunt for me. Yeah. It's not, there's no challenge to that. Yeah. Zero. And I, I grew up doing that. We had a deer lease and it was fun. We got to manage it. Yeah. Through, you know, we had starting off, we had deer that were in the 120 inch class. And yeah. By the time we were, you know, my family's actually still got spots on that lease and they're shooting 180 inch deer every Dang, year. But that's pretty awesome. To, you know, to sit there and watch those deer grow up and do that though is, it was fun to, to see the fruits of your efforts, but yeah. after a while, I was just getting kind of tired of shooting my buddies. You know, you watch them. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, because you've seen them. Everything, you've, you've known them, and then it's time, you know, they're six and a half, seven years old, and it's time to whack them. Time to whack them. And yeah, you don't want man, to. It's now. like, that's my, that's my buddy. Man, man. I watched Plus, that thing. I fed him $10,000 worth of protein, and that's a lot of money in that deer. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, and that's kind of the thing. Like, you know, that's why I always lean towards public. But, uh, you know, yeah. it's and there's some great opportunities in even in Texas. I think uh, you know it's it's pretty there difficult. is any 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 of the public stuff. I think when you get into the big game, it's going to be difficult for the good stuff. But there's opportunities. Like yeah, my buddy Jeremy going. went out to um, it was I guess that'd be Eastern New Mexico and just went on a pronghorn hunt. Yeah, and have you eaten pronghorn? Uh, yeah, I have. God, it's, that's the best meat I've ever had. It in my opinion, it tops elk. You think so? In my opinion, I think that it's like like elk is. Elk's here, and it's just a smidge better, you know. And I always told me like, man, it's gonna be it's taste. It tastes like sage. It's just you know, but dude, I had it. It was, I'm telling you, it was awesome. I accept your opinion. Really, you yeah. don't agree? To, you no, don't agree? Think, you would agree with that elk one? It's wonderful. I mean, just as far it as is. Just lean, awesome. It's just man. I just I couldn't believe it that I couldn't believe that uh, that prong was that tender. Like it was like, I mean, like. Yeah. Maybe or, maybe it was a, just like a good not really rutted up buck because the one that maybe. I had, you know, my buddy just shot. It was one. rough. We, we got back from a hunt not too long ago, and yeah, he. Uh, you it was get, rough. You get those big rutted up bucks. You know, they're, they're a little funky. Huh. Yeah. But that, I mean, I don't know. You know what stage of the rut this one was in. But I'll eat anything. I mean, I'm not really gonna. Oh no. No. I'm bad an eye to it. No. Somebody and that's one good thing about elk too is when that might put them up uh, above it a little bit just because of how much meat you get. Yeah. Like those those sheep that we're hunting. Yeah. How are those to eat? Not good at all. They're not. But when you spend that kind of money to go shoot a shoot, Audad. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna eat it. Sixty thousand dollars. Audad's pretty steak. good. If you, uh, yeah, I'm eating every bit of that. Thing. Absolutely. But that Audad, like you know, it's um, you just have to slow cook that thing. Really. I don't know why this podcast always turns into food. I don't. Everybody was like, dude. Because well, I mean, it, it all it all comes full. Circle. It all is. I mean, that's you what know, that's why doing. we do it. Yeah. You know, a lot of people are like, man, and that's why I'm, you know, that's one reason I'm a meat hunter, um, just because. You know, that's what I stock my freezer. That's what I feed my family with most of the time is, is that type of stuff. So, you know, I mean, just, uh, yeah, makes it definitely makes it fun. Makes it, you know, kind of worth the while. But so anything else? Um, so what else do you do when you're not hunting? You're, what do you do? 
Because I know you were doing it. You had a tree service for a while. Yeah. Uh, jack of all trades, master of none. I know you've um, been. Man, you've done videography, all... drumming. Yeah, yeah I'm. Uh, Have you got any, you got any drumming events coming up? Oh, I know you're at the I, church. I, I do. I do like some session work. I do uh, studio work. So. Oh yeah. I've got a session coming up here in a couple of weeks, but not really that much. I got a home studio. I'm not really a practicing professional drummer. I've, yeah. I've got some buddies every now and then hit me yeah. up trying to get me to go back on the road, but it's going to take something real special for me to do any of that. Got a uh, young kiddo at the house and that's right. Life. It's hard, it's hard that's to right. get yeah, away yeah. from the family now, you know, how old now? Oh, he's seven months. Oh yeah. Brand new. Oh dude. He's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He's, so you have your running buddy here pretty quick. Oh yeah. I mean, he that's going to be already awesome. ready to go. He's, he's great. That's great, dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. It, it makes leaving for hunts really, really hard. That's the, that's the worst part now. Yeah, I, I can agree with that for sure. <clears throat> you know, uh, you know, Cameron, you know, she rolls with me in the duck blind quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's been in the, she's been in the duck blind with me since she was probably three. So and that, I think that adds another level to it also is mm-hmm. being able to be that father in that position. Yeah. Just chuck them up. in the, chuck them in the duck sled and just, I just pulled her through a swamp. Man, that's great. Those are I memories, mean, you know, she'll be yeah, able to it's, take it's great. Know, for a lifetime. So yeah, she went on, uh, it was like, I think it was last year or the year before she went in, she fell in. And uh, deep six and some waders, still wanted to hang, awesome. you know. So, you tougher know, tougher than a lot of my buddies. Tougher than a lot of the people I know. I know, you know, even me. If I get cold, you know what happens. I'm building fire, and you're out uh, on it. I'm out, dude. I, I mean, I, I care. That's why I carry a lot of fire starter. Okay. That's why I was ex- excited about those that pyro putty. Yeah, I was like, holy crap. Yeah, another fire starter. You know that all my buddies know me for always out starting a fire or doing something like that. But I think I'm probably the complete. Are you going to duck hunt this year? Yeah, I think so. I got a duck stamp, that which I, I didn't. I didn't. I got. I got. Well, I got one last year, but it was like right before the hunt. So yeah, yeah. I got one hunt, and which Reagan was pregnant at that time, so it was yeah. really hard to break away. But I was able to sneak up to Oklahoma. We went and shot some sand hills, and then next. How was that? I thought, man, I always wanted to do that. It was awesome. I mean, the hunt was perfect. Stiff wind yeah. at our back. It was a. Everybody we had in the blinds were great shooters. Uh, yeah. We had some of the guys who were. Uh, you know, in with the company who were there. We had some guests there that were yeah. up, upland game hunters. So, like were, Northwest Texas type stuff, or well, they they did uh, like pheasant hunts. That's what oh, they were yeah. big into and quail hunts, stuff like yeah. that. But still, good shots. And I mean, those big birds coming in, they brought them right in on Dude. top of us. And it, that was my first actual guided hunt too, and that was nice. Man, I seen the, those dogs that wear the goggles. Yeah, did they have those? Uh, the, so the dude was running his dog. He won. Running it with just goggles, butt but naked. I saw, I saw why because I, I went up and grabbed one and I grabbed it by the leg and he started pecking the fire out of my really? leg. Really? Oh, <laughs> we got into a little a little scuffle right there. Yeah, and I was over there whipping his ass. Man, I seen I saw I was on Instagram this dog with those goggles on, whipping the crap out of one of them stinking cranes. They're I don't know who mean. was winning. I actually don't know who was winning. They I don't had, know if the crane they, was winning. They, the or... guy had a bat, and seriously, I mean, he'd run out there and smoke him in the head. They're aggressive. Yeah, they're mean. You get them down, they're. They got that beak, and they're coming after you. Yeah, because, I mean, they're standing, what, what, three feet tall? Yeah, I'd say three feet, something like that. Dang. And I know you're already going to ask, did we eat them? And that's the only reason. I, I already tra- know. I traveled six hours up there. I've never eaten eat, one. Like, I was like, dude, y'all are making me travel six hours to shoot three birds. Only reason Is that I'm the limit, is three I've per heard, person? Yeah, I've, I've heard they're good. So I was going to go up there and eat them. Funny story. Was the hype, was it all that? I didn't get to find out. <laughs> I go out, uh, so my buddy Grant, is a, he's guiding with the outfit yeah. up there. Uh go up there and they were going to tour a manufacturing facility. I didn't really want to go over there and see that at that time. I didn't really have any skin in the game. So I sure. would rather go drive around and look at fields, see the scout for the next day. And yeah. we go out, we take the birds back to his house, clean them, do all that stuff. Uh, go out, scout, find some good stuff for the next day. He takes me back to the hotel. I meet up with all the guys. We go out to dinner middle of the night. I'm up thinking about everything as I usually am. Can't sleep. Yeah. Going through everything checklists in my, my mind. So I'm texting Grant in the middle of the night, like, don't forget those crane breasts. I left them in your freezer. Don't forget them. Get a message when he wakes up. Got them, bro. Don't worry. I won't forget them. Everything's good. Go out, hunt the next morning. We, uh, Me and one of the investors getting ready to leave, drive back home. And I, I remembered right at the last minute, I was like, oh, hey, Grant. Holler over there. Hey, you got those crane breasts? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, no. Drop the ball. No. Man, I got to go back to Tyler here in a couple weeks. I'll, I'll bring them back. I was like, yeah, I will Never see those crane birds. You never saw them, did no, you? No, absolutely he ate not. Them. They ate that was the ploy. Yeah, that was the ploy. That's what they do to everybody. I'm not naming names because that's 
I'd, I'd start naming banana, names. I'd throw them out. on the tailpipe kind of deal over there. That's not right. Great hunt. They set you up. It's a beautiful hunt. Great everything. Hey, they eat really good. And, yeah, Except oh, you don't get to eat them. Yeah, and then they just Golly. bombard all your all your groceries. That's not right. No, not Because I've heard, like, the hype. That's. I mean, you got me driving six hours to shoot three birds. Granted, it was a great shoot. Everything was beautiful. It was fun. Best 15 I mean, minutes of my life. I mean, a pretty good-sized piece of meat on them? Yeah. About, like, it, a goose, maybe? I would compare it to a goose, yeah. Yeah? pretty big like uh just a dark meat i'm sure yeah like, yeah yeah I'm, i've never like i said i've never tried one i've i'm uh i've got invited on a couple hunts maybe this year that i might get to go on so we'll see i man i'd love to try them i, I definitely they're not i'm gonna cook one while i'm there Rib out of the sky i hear I it say. i mean i hear that it's like the best but grant for I as far as probably fun. listening i don't know because of you yeah thank you appreciate you grant oh I mean, I think you should get. Good God! Some, I think you should get some kind of repercussion for that. Good God, awful buddy! You know? Yeah, that yeah, that's kind of crap. That's, that's man. what it is. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, man, there's all kinds of stuff you know out there like that. I, I mean, uh, I know some guys up in Oklahoma that hunt them. I know some. I know quite a few people that hunt, and all, everybody's like, "Man, you got to do it. You got to come out here." Yeah. But the dog is what one thing that I really trips me out that I've got to see. I wouldn't take mine. I love my dogs too much. Yeah, I probably wouldn't take Kimber. Yeah. Wouldn't take camera. I got a new pup coming. So, how do you? Yeah, I got one from uh, um, Blazing Gun Dogs. Tim Seguin. Yeah, yeah. He's I got a pup, dogs. so we're pick that. We'll pick that pup up not this weekend, but the next. So, cool. so pretty pumped. I'm I'm pumped about it, but then I've got to go through the puppy stage, and I'm not I'm I'm yeah. not excited about that. I'd rather questions. have a finished dog, honestly. But the family didn't want. They wanted a puppy. I'm like, no, oh, you guys want the punishment. Yeah, they're gonna be upset. Craps in the house. They're not gonna like that. I'm gonna be choose up the furniture. Yeah, they're not gonna like. Definitely not gonna like that. Yeah. So, but I'm pretty pumped. You know, we went down and checked them out a couple weeks ago, through two three weeks ago. Um, but I mean, you never know. You know, it's. I think they'll all be good. Tim's like, man, it doesn't matter which one. They're all gonna be good. Which, you know, I think they will. I mean, yeah. just from the pedigrees that they're coming from. Oh, he should be he's awesome. messing with some fire stuff over there. Yeah. Have you have you checked his dogs out before? Oh yeah. I've I've well. I've, known tim for a long time and yeah. kind of just watched him through instagram and everything he's just a grow and trainer, put it all together dude. he's all in on that deal isn't he yeah like i mean it's amazing to watch him train these things like it's he he can have them in a lineup like like they're being frisked and he can call one by name like like santa claus calls his reindeer he can just call you know whatever the name is so be. cool you know piston piston will come out you know or whatever the name might be drake here comes drake out of there that's cool yeah, it's just one after another, and it's. Are like, you going to send your dog too? Oh to yeah, get, for to sure. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so uh, my dog will come, uh, hang out with us. I guess till till it's like four, five months old, and then I'll send him back down here because he moved down to Magnolia, yeah, I Texas. Saw that. Yeah, so dude, an awesome place. You should see it. Like it's, it's really really nice. I like that area down there. Oh yeah, I have to spend yeah, a yeah. Lot of time down there. Yeah, he uh, he's got a really nice facility. Um, bunch of dogs not you know i wouldn't say like overly amount but i mean even that's litter that he just had was 10 there's 10 in that thing so pretty wild but yeah man so we got you know a lot of things happening i mean uh duck seasons i think we're at like 40 45 50 day 50 days away um we gotta we're, we're gonna take a trip out to iowa i've got a yeah so we're gonna hunt some areas out there what are the dates on that um i think we're looking at like the 13th of okay. October, heading out there. Ooh, man, y'all gonna ought to have be, some fun. It ought to be jam up. I got invited on that. So we're going to go out there. We're going to get some footage. We're taking Nick, our production manager, out there. Um, get some good footage of all that. And So we'll go out there four or five days. Is that going to be uh, field hunting? or? I think it's going to be water. Really? I think, yeah, I think we got uh, it's some, believe it or not, uh, they're telling me that it's there's flooded timber that that where we're where we're headed. So yeah, I don't know. I've never known Iowa for having flooded timber, but I don't know. It's usually we'll the spots that you hear about like that that are one of a kind, though. I know, and it's public, so it's really yeah. So we'll see. I don't know. I don't know what I'm up against, um, but that's kind of the beauty of it, you know. Yeah. In my like I said, in all my travels, that's the part that's fun to me is the travels because I encounter weird people. That's my favorite thing. Weird and and good food. Makes me fat during duck season. So, trying to lose some yellow fat. Oh, trying. yeah. Trying. You How's don't have a problem with that. Well, I've been doing the, the healthy thing. I know. I've been, tr- I've been doing that. 
Yeah. Corlin's on it. Corlin's on this. <laughs> he's on keto diet, which is like, and he's like, he he wrapped. Corlin's doing keto? Yes, and he wrapped pickles and bacon and put them in a smoker last night. <laughs> I don't know. Pickles and bacon? Yeah, he took a whole pickle and he wrapped it in bacon. And there's a better way. I would there's think. There's a better way. I would think. I know keto sounds cool, but we eat healthy and we eat everything that comes from the earth and we're trying to right. do all that stuff and it sounds right. hippy dippy and everything, but I can run through a brick wall at 1030 at night. Yeah. I mean, I feel great doing yeah. all this and you don't have to eat bacon wrapped pickles. It sounded, it so. didn't. I Unless didn't. it tastes good. I mean, you wrap some stuff in bacon. You can wrap anything good. in bacon. Yeah. I mean, I mean, dog turd. Pickles just about a jalapeno, you know, I mean. Yeah, kind of. I, I would think so. The, uh, let me check my, uh, and it's still on there. Cool. I always check. I always check uh, and see what's kind of going in. Sometimes people make some comments. It's kind of early in the day, but um, no. So yeah. So we got we got Corlin. He's he's trying to shuck yellow fat, which Corlin's always doing something odd anyway. He comes in here every day. He's uh he's like a he's like a, a Kramer, like a, like a yeah, or like a Tasmanian devil. Yeah, that's better. You just never know what he's he's gonna do or say. He comes on the podcast all the time, and you know he. You know, you're like, man, I don't. Can we? What can we say on here? You were asking me before we started. I'm like, no, it's okay. Which, you know, because Corlin pops off with who knows what, and so we, I get nervous every time he's on, um, just because I never know what that guy's gonna say. So, but uh, like that friend that you can't have on speakerphone out in public. Definitely, no, he's one of them. Yeah, he's one of them. No, no, but we, you know, we've got. Uh, I think it's gonna be a good duck season. I think you know, with we've got some early cold fronts blowing in, so. Uh, the way it's kind of panning out, I've got some saltwater trips still planned, so I'm gonna go down and chase some redfish, and uh, and then once we get in full duck hunting season, then it's, you know, Melissa will be mad at me because I'm gone. Absolutely, you know, that's what she, we all live for. She she gets upset because of all that. But. I've been on the, uh, I've been. Do you get? I mean, you have kitchen pass where you can hunt. Or man, is, is your got, wife pretty I cool? I got with so it? lucky. You do. I got, I got so lucky. lucky too. Yeah, my wife lets me just kind of do whatever as long as the bills get paid and the lights that's, are on and that's it. Yeah, I'm taking care of business. And then she yeah. lets me go. And, Mine's same way and all that stuff. So yeah, it's been a after blessing. I've been gone. Like I've been I've been on some like 11, 12, 13 day stints um, abroad. I get I can start catching a little flack, which yeah. I can appreciate. They'll, that. they'll get annoyed. Yeah, like but what do you do? At that point, you kind of start getting tired. You're like, what am I doing out here? What am I doing with my life? <laughs> Yeah, because I really think, and I it am. seems like I've only been out there like three days. Like you've been gone ten days. I'm like, I haven't been gone ten days. And then you look back, I'm like, oh my gosh, because you know, I don't pay attention to weekend or weekday or what day it is. I'm just, you know, the s- schedules we run, right? Run on four hours of sleep, you know, running and gunning all over the place. So it's, you know, I can't wait. I mean, I'm this year. I'm I'm really excited for the season, just with everything that we've got going with Nick going, uh, getting to film everything, uh, just you know. I'm really trying to get it. I'm really trying to capture just the more of the uh, along the way type stuff yeah. versus just put the put the trigger pull. So well, that's what I think that's where a lot of stuff the, going on the, the duck blind and is. yeah, for sure. Because you know, just having you know, because we're hunting with Cortland this year and again, and you know, he freaks out a lot. And we're, just to catch that on camera on some of his meltdowns is going to make for is going like, to make for uh, good TV. Just. Uh, Short temper or like duck Nazi kind of freaking. No, like just you know, short temper. You know, he's on ranch waters now. Okay. Um, he drinks a lot of those ranch waters. See, they came out with all the cool alcoholic drinks and everything after I sobered up. Me too. They did. I mean, they really me they too. did it on purpose. You I know, mean, like last year, like the past couple years, he's been on the White Claws. He he said he hates White Claws now, and he switched to ranch water. So now he's going to drink the ranch water, and he's going to get he's going to get hung over, and then he's going to get crabby in the morning. And then that's when we poke the bear and we make him more, ang- oh, we make okay. him more angry. And then now Nick's there, we can catch it on film, so he can't say that he didn't do that. Perfect. Yeah, I think it's gonna be good. That's cool. Well, dude, I appreciate you coming on here. Uh, it's kind of last minute, you know. I've been trying to get on, get you on here for off, off and on, and then it's like poof, here you are. Yeah. So. Well, no, it was, it was a pleasure. It's fun, dude. Yeah. I think so. I just uh, like to dive into a little bit of everybody, you know, dive into a little bit of everybody's background and kind of, you know. Uh, Gives me something to talk about and kind of gives another, you know, some other people's perspectives on things. So. Yeah. And uh, I got an elk hunt coming up later this year. So if you want to keep along, you know, follow yeah. along with that, I'm going to yeah. hopefully be able to have some, some service where I do can you do still, some do you still run Instagram a lot or do you? Uh, not as much as more, but uh, yeah. not as much as I used to, but uh, yeah. I'm going to try to a little bit more this year. Yeah. 
try to keep some people updated. I what do you, what's your, what, how can people find you on Instagram? Uh, it's just my name, Casey Corkmas. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Check him cool. out. It's pretty awesome. He, he uh, always has some cool stuff. Yeah, I got some big mule deer. You carrying any uh, camera gear with you? Uh, I might take like my DSLR and some stuff just to have yeah. it. Big, yeah. Big lens, you know. Cool. We'll see. My cousin's going to be in there. He's got a tag as well. We're going to. Awesome. So where you, where are you guys cool. headed? Can you? I mean, what part uh, of the New, country? New Mexico. Oh yeah, yeah that's uh, awesome. I mean, it's draw draw stuff only. So yeah. Unit seventeen. If anybody uh, looks awesome. at a map, that's, that's where awesome. we're going to be. That's awesome. Yeah. So pretty, is it pretty, pretty hard big. to get drawn for that? Yeah. It, it is. is. Yeah. How long have you been, How long have you put in for that? Oh that man, uh, I think it's been four three years since I've been in there last time. But we yeah. uh, we also do some landowner tags and stuff like oh, that. Cool. So there's some other ways to get around if you're not able to draw every year. And yeah. I've actually been kind of talking with is my wife. Is it vertical hunting or is it walkable? Oh, no, dude. This stuff is brutal. And that's why we drew it. Yeah. Big bulls, but it's really, really tough country. Really? So. It's because I see some of those New Mexico hunts where it's like, I could hunt those because it doesn't look as yeah. treacherous. So my dad's actually got a hunt. He's leaving out uh, Wednesday of next week. His stuff's going to be really flat ground. Uh, bulls are really, really scarce in there. You're not going to see that many, but when you see them, they're going to be really, really big. Really? So that'll be a really cool hunt. I can't wait to keep up with him on that. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm, I don't know. I'm gonna see if I can break away. See if my wife will let me sneak away for that one. Dude, that's awesome. If yeah. you guys ever need a, you know, photographer or whatever, let me know. Oh man, I'd love Heck to roll, yeah. roll just to just to do that stuff. Oh, that'd be awesome. Send Nick with you guys. Heck yeah. Well, cool, man. Uh, appreciate you coming on the show. Dude, thank thank, you, thank uh, my sponsors again here at Back Down South Clothing, Lindell, Texas. Uh, make sure to check us out on Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts. Like it, share it. Uh, here on Facebook. We try to throw this on Facebook Live all the time, get a lot of response off of that. Make sure you share the same. We wouldn't Without you guys, we wouldn't be here. Um, thanks for watching. Gabe Spencer, Out of the Blind. Catch you guys on the next one. Sweet.